Modern geophysics has uh, grown enormously. It's probably one of the most multidisciplinary and uh, complex uh, fields of science because it requires collaboration between uh, people we have background in engineering, uh, in algorithm development, uh, in uh, data, of course, uh, large data set maintenance and production, and in modeling. Uh, so it does require tremendous level of uh, collaboration, interdisciplinary interaction, and, uh, and synergies between all these various uh, experts. Science Systems and Applications Incorporated uh, is a 45-year-old company that has operating in the field of geophysics uh, uh, without interruption. My father, Om Prakash Bhaihethi, founded the company in 1977 with an ideal of just doing more of what he was passionate about. The science about the world and how we fit in it and the universe. SSCI scientists and engineers support a lot of missions uh, from ISA2 to uh, they work in geodesy and in a mesoscale in climate and radiation and also of course data simulation and modeling. And very important there is a component of engineering and the most uh, recent that is uh, the contribution to uh, the, the mission Dragonfly. Dragonfly is an absolutely groundbreaking mission. What Dragonfly is going to do is it's going to fly around the atmosphere of Titan, land on the surface, and hop from location to location, analyzing the chemistry of the surface of Titan. One of the fundamentally you know, new techniques of analysis that's going to be used is the pulse neutron generator gamma spectrometer. That's never been used on a spacecraft before. Uh, another really exciting element is the Acellus LiDAR. Dragonfly is really trying to answer some of these really important questions that we have as humans. You know, are we alone in the universe? And also, how alone are we? You know, what, what we learn at Dragonfly might uh, change the way we ask that question. There's so many questions that we ask ourselves from what we find in the data. So it produces even more requests for engineering and science to get more data to resolve them. My name is Erin Urquhart. I'm the PACE Applications Coordinator um, at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. The PACE uh, Observatory is Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem Mission, um, is NASA's next big investment in climate research. Um, we're going to have three different instruments um, that are going to fly together to give us an advanced look at oceans, atmospheres, and land. So PACE is truly the first global hyperspectral mission. And what that means is it's going to give us global images of the Earth every one to two days. Beyond just science and research, PACE is going to have practical applications. So it's going to allow us to monitor air quality, water quality health. Um, we're gonna be able to assess and mitigate uh, disaster impacts. Um, we're gonna be able to ensure safe and uh, sustainable fisheries and aquaculture practices. And lastly, PACE data is gonna be used to improve climate models so that as we move forward, we can understand how the Earth is changing to climate. SSCI is uh, currently supporting uh, most of the offices and laboratories that are in the Earth Science Division at Goddard. One example is the Global Modeling and Assimilation Office, uh, whose main goal uh, is to basically contribute to the creation of a Earth modeling framework, uh, which uh, is something that represents uh, various components of the Earth system all put together, but uh, developed in a way that is modular and allows a user to extract uh, a component of this framework and work uh, separately offline and then plug it back in, uh, in a way that is relatively straightforward. Our main focus is to develop an Earth system model that can be used for weather forecasting and seasonal forecasting and we have different components of the model, the land surface, the ocean, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. And we're trying to bring these together to create this global Earth system model to, to produce weather forecasts. Because tropical cyclones um, are one of those really extreme weather events, right, that uh, can have a huge impact on human life. So what we're really interested in is being able to better predict how a tropical cyclone is going to behave as it is approaching populated areas. And this is where SMAP comes in. SMAP is short for soil moisture active passive, and it is a mission that observes the soil moisture, so the water content of, of the top layer, of the top soil layer. So by incorporating SMAP observations into our weather forecast model, we can better constrain 
what our simulated land surface conditions are, and this has a direct impact on our ability to predict uh, tropical cyclone behavior. Christoph Bargan is an SSAI scientist whose expertise is in the stratosphere and ozone particularly, also, uh, and, uh, and he has uh, developed, uh, uh, together with other GML scientists, the ability of assimilating water vapor in the stratosphere, which is an exceptional capability in general operational weather forecast systems. They do not assimilate water vapor in the stratosphere. The Tonga eruption, uh, uh, it was an underwater eruption. The potency of that eruption is such that uh, the water vapor reached the top of the stratosphere, and that is a unique uh, situation that has not really occurred uh, in recent human history and uh, we are completely uh, in front of a, of a new phenomenon and uh, it, uh, it might have very dangerous implications because water in the stratosphere might damage the ozone layer and might have other unpredicted uh, impacts on climate so we are still studying and we are learning about it. As we learn what we find out from our sensors and the data we receive we find out we have more questions. So we have to keep looking for new ways to get data that we can analyze and then produce the next set of questions. So the future is grand.